amateur radio enthusiasts and electronics enthusiasts around the world. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. If you want to ask a question, send it to askdave, all one word, at ARRL dot o-r-g okay and that'll come to me you can put attachments on it like pictures and and stuff like that oh believe me pictures make it much easier and remember who what when where why do all of those things so i really get a feel for what you're asking about now this question right here got stuck in an email bin for about four years so i am sure that jason has already solved his problem but other people might have the same problem. He says, I'm a do-it-yourself nut. Okay, I have never made nuts myself, to tell you the truth. I am a nut, maybe. He says he makes everything himself. He is planning to build a ham shack in the backyard. He lives on a half-acre lot, 103 feet by 206 feet. Okay, pretty good-sized lot. He doesn't have an HOA to worry about, but of course the city has its codes. He wants to build a two- or three-story pole building. Now, if you're out west here, you know what a pole garage is. You actually stick poles into the ground. You don't pour a foundation. You stick poles into the ground. And around here, people are good at doing this, okay? And then you actually build by attaching to the poles. They'll hold up a lot of weight. That's how barns are often built around here. They don't make foundations for them. They, they do poles. The guy across the street from me is building a little bit of a, it's a pole construction, pole garage that he can put his RV in. What he's going to do is make a two or three story pole building and give his wife a crafts room on the first floor and put the ham shack in the attic on the top. My question is what effect on verticals and dipole antennas will a sheet metal roof have? Well, it definitely will have an effect says, I plan on putting the antennas above the roof, mounted to masts at about 30 feet up, maybe 10 feet above the metal roof. I'm guessing I'm asking if a sheet metal roof will make dipoles and verticals mounted above it fail to work. No, it will not. But it will affect the antennas, okay? Now, if you put up that pole and then you put up other poles and string a dipole between them, or put up the pole and put in an inverted V, remembering to keep the ends off the ground by about seven or eight feet so people don't guillotine themselves running through there at night. Or pets or deer. I have had a deer take out an antenna, trashed it, ran up one of the guys, pulled the thing down, got tangled in the wires, broke all the wires, went out, and by the time I got to the antenna it was trash. All the fiberglass poles have been broken and so on and so forth. I looked at retrieving it but it just wasn't worth it. it. wasn't the best antenna. It was about 3 dB down from a regular dipole, so it was a compromised antenna anyway. But what can you put on top of that pole? If you put a standard vertical antenna up on that pole, you can. You need to run tuned radials. Two for each band you're going to operate on, okay? And that'll work perfectly well. And, and it will be well positioned, a nice low takeoff angle for DX and things like that. If you put up a factory made, multi band, no radial type, you can certainly do that. And you just put it up on top of the pole. Now you probably are going to have to guy it to keep the wind from blowing the whole thing over because you've got where you attach your riser to the roof, there's quite a bending moment on that spot right there. So you want to guy it at the 10 foot point and also probably halfway up. Now, I keep telling people that there's no point in spending seven or $800 on a factory built but not put together kit for an antenna. These antennas that they say, no radials needed, all this kind of stuff like that, do they work? Yes, they work and they work very well. They're hideously expensive. And they send them to you with no two parts put together. So you're going to spend two or three days putting this thing together. And they don't send you extra parts either. So don't lose a thing. Don't try to assemble this over grass. Do it on concrete, okay? You know, maybe the top half and the bottom of half separately in the garage so that if you drop a part, you can find it. Now, why spend $700 on, or more on one of these antennas when you can get an antenna that works just 
as well for less than 100 you could go with the NFED dipole kit that the ARRL produces, less than $100. It will cover 40, 20, 15, and 10. Or you can take that same antenna, add another 66 feet to it, and it will cover, are you ready for this? 80, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meters, okay? For less than $100. That's pretty cheap. Or even better, you can put up just a plain old 40 meter dipole, like an inverted V, just use some wire that's left over from other projects. You know, you can rip Romex apart and just use the wires that are in there, including the ground wire. You do not have to strip the insulation off. And uh, go down to your local farm store like Murdoch's or Tractor Supply and pick up some electric fence insulators, one in the center, one at each end, okay? You can, if you want, run your coax up to that, split it apart, put the shield to one side, the center conductor to the other. A lot of people do that, dirt cheap. I would recommend soldering that connection because it will eventually weather and you don't want that to happen. Or you can put in a little SO239 socket and then that way you can put a regular piece of coax that already has the PL259 on the end right into that. And that will cost you not very much money at all. Now, let's talk about your second floor location. The problem with the second floor location is you've got to bring your wire all the way to the ground, to the ground rod and the lightning arrestor. And you'll probably use lightning arrestors that look like this Alpha Delta right here. This is clamped. You don't solder these. Clamped to your ground rod. You put to the antenna here. This is grounded. This goes up the wall or in the wall to your upstairs shack. Boy, if there's any way you can put your shack on the first floor or in the basement, I'd do that. But I think probably your wife doesn't want to climb the stairs when she goes in there for her crafts. So there you have it. Some ideas for you. I will be very interested to see what you come up with. Send me a picture. And anyone else who's doing this kind of thing, send me a picture. I recommend inexpensive antennas that you make yourself because they perform just as well as the $700 or the $1,000 antenna and you get out just the same. And you can spend even more on a magnetic loop and it has about the same gain as a dipole. Okay, dipoles are what I call unity gain antennas. Uh, the unity is a fancy word mathematicians, and I've got a degree in math, used for the number one. Unity. It comes from the Bible, where it says, if you are not one, ye are not mine. And so that oneness, that unity, that's where the phrase came from. But why spend $700 or $1,500 on a unity gain antenna when you can build one yourself for practically nothing? There you have it. Now, we have a special going on right now. This is a $2 bill. If you sign up on Patreon at patreon.com slash ke0og at the $2 level, which is the lowest level, or any level above that, or you do the similar thing on PayPal, where there's a $5, $10, and $20 available, or you become a member on YouTube for more than $2 a month, we will send you, as a token of our thanks, a genuine U.S. currency, and this is real currency, by the way, real currency, $2 bill. You don't see these very often, but we will send one to you. Okay, until we next meet, 73.